Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to take a closer look at Intel. The stock is down roughly 3.3% today as I am recording. In the past five days, the stock is down nearly 10%. And this is pretty interesting because the company recently hosted its innovation day. It was yesterday and today and presented a lot of great information. So on today's episode, I want to do the following. First, I want to take a closer look at three things that I really did enjoy about Intel's innovation 2023. And then I want to take a closer look at why the stock price is down and just take a closer look at valuation compared to its peers like AMD and NVIDIA. And I'm not going to lie, the results on that value uh, on some of those valuation metrics are going to be pretty, pretty interesting. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. All right. So the first thing I want to take a closer look at is their manufacturing. That's going to be the first update. And no, I'm not going to talk about their five nodes in four year, how everybody else is kind of mentioning, mentioning that. What I really want to talk about is is their universal chiplet interconnect express and we kind of heard something about this in march 2nd of 2022 so a little bit over a year ago where intel along with advanced semiconductor engineering amd arm google cloud meta microsoft qualcomm samsung and tsmc have announced the establishment of an industry consor consortium to promote an open die-to-die -die interconnect and a standard called Universal Chiplet Interconnect Express. Uh, so what's happening here? What was this? This was about a year ago, a little bit over a year ago. And one thing we started to hear uh, about a year, maybe two years ago, is kind of this chiplet architecture, uh, where these chips are going to be using a lot of different kind of Lego pieces. So this kind of partnership or or movement that was happening is to make sure that all these connections work well with each other uh, and this is to kind of promote the future of semiconductor innovation so in theory someone can go out there and say hey look i'm gonna get my cpu chip made by intel maybe intel creates the best cpu chip out in the market right now and maybe maybe i might go to another a memory company and get my memory chips from there the great thing is is because now there is this universal pattern, um, all this kind of die-to-die -die interconnects work pretty well. So kind of the Lego pieces can match and can kind of connect and play well with each other. Uh, so it's a pretty cool movement, and we saw some really, really big names. And that's kind of a top-level overview of what happened. Well, yesterday, we actually saw some great news Um Pat was at a keynote, and he kind of pointed out to a test chip called Pike. Creek and Pike Creek was a Intel chiplet built on Intel 3 and a Synopsys chiplet made on TSMC's N3E. So Intel 3 is TS is Intel's kind of three nanometer um, product to some extent. TSMC's N3 is their three nanometer version, uh, and they are connected using Intel's EMIB advanced packaging tech. And this example shows the commitments of TSMC, Synopsys, and Intel Foundry to support an open ecosystem with UCIE. Uh, so I do believe this was the first first time we actually saw a, a, a chip by a big by a few big players kind of with this platform so i do believe it kind of showcases the future of of semiconductor manufacturing and the great thing right is it does also show the strength of intel's advanced packaging technology as well uh, so i'm pretty excited to see where this goes and this is probably one of my favorite news that came out yesterday in intel's kind of innovation event now I want to take a closer look at some other events, but before we do go there, guys, I want to say thank you for the support. We just hit 28.1 subs. I'm trying to hit 30,000 by the end of the year, so if you haven't, make sure to hit the thumbs up. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you want to learn more about the semiconductor market, I do have a weekly exclusive video. Click join to learn more about that membership. A special offer at fool.com slash jose. Free newsletter at josenajaro.substack.com and free semiconductor news at semiconductorwatch.com. Finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. Now, the second kind of interesting news I want to take a closer look even involves Intel's accelerator and that accelerator is no is known as Gaudi too. So the really big news came out that Intel 
just secured a design that's pretty big, a large AI supercomputer built entirely on Intel Xeon processor and the 4000 and 4000 Intel Gaudi 2 accelerators. Uh, so I do believe this is a big push and kind of showcasing the strength of Intel's AI accelerator. And during a CFO conference, we actually heard a little bit more about, in, about Intel's accelerating kind of guidance and pipeline for the future. Um, but just to kind of remind investors, back in July 28th of 2023, when Intel reported their most recent earnings call, which was their quarter two earnings, they did mention that their pipeline of opportunities through 2024 is rapidly increasing and is now over $1 billion and continuing to expand with Gaudi driving the lighting sh- the line share. But like I mentioned, it, yesterday we did have a CFO Q&A session and there was a question about the Gaudi pipeline. And these are some pretty interesting points from here. One, they do believe that they are going to get some modest revenue is expected from Gaudi this quarter. They also mentioned that the one billion pipeline pertains more to 2024 than 2023. They also expect uh, expectations of more revenue in the next quarter with a significant contribution in the following year. Now, this is what I got even more excited about. They do mention that Gaudi's pipeline has grown since the earnings call. And by the end of October, it is anticipated to be significantly larger. Remember, in their last earnings call, they mentioned a $1 billion pipeline. They do believe that by October, it's going to be antis- it's going to be significantly larger. Uh, so pretty interesting. They did also mention another point about the data center market not pertaining with their Gaudi accelerators. They did mention that in the first half of this year, they actually expected to lose some market share in the data center CPU market. And even though they did lose shares, it was actually, they actually held shares better than anticipated. Uh, So obviously some good news there for Intel. Um, They still do expect some market share loss in the second half of this year. So obviously at the end of the day, still some really, really good news for AMD. Now, next, I want to take a closer look at their at the third thing that I really did enjoy about Intel innovation, and that is going to be their so- a, a software announcement. Uh, they did announce the kind of general availability of Intel Developer Cloud. Intel Developer Cloud lets developers build and test applications on the whole Big Iron family, to, including Intel Gaudi 2 accelerators, their Xeon processors, their CPU Max series, their data center GPUs as well, excuse me. And it kind of creates software for AI, deep learning, high-performance computing, rendering, and more. He also does mention that Intel Developer Cloud also lets developers access pre-production hardware and thus prepare to get to the market faster. So in the upcoming quarters, Intel is releasing some new data center solutions, and those data center solutions are already available to be kind of coded and and kind of uh, uh, test applications using this developer cloud suite. Uh, So this is pretty interesting. It does seem like Intel is focusing a little bit more on maybe the cost of software as well as becoming another revenue segment for them. Here we can see there are different service tiers for this software solutions. Some are free, some pay as you go, some are team access based on the enterprise market. So those are the three things I really did enjoy about their innovation event. And I do believe those are three things that weren't really counted for in forms of the future stock price for Intel. So I'm pretty surprised that Intel stock price is down almost 10% as I am recording in the past five days. Now I want to take a closer look at why did the stock drop? So like I mentioned, there was a CFO event or a Q&A session. um, And there were two questions that I do believe are kind of worrying investors. First, there was a question about margins. And the company mentioned that, hey, look, billions of dollars of higher startup costs are due to introducing five nodes in four years. So in theory saying, hey, look, research and development is pretty expensive and that's going to continue to be a headwind for the company. They also mentioned new high performance products come with additional costs, which is also affecting margins. The other thing is they are ramping up production. And usually when it comes to building up production and actually getting that revenue, there is some lag because it takes some time to build and ramp up that production to build those chips and finally send them out to being sold and stuff like that. So that's also going to create a form of headwind to their uh, margins. Um, Some tailwinds, the company has some tailwinds, right? They do expect um, that eventually higher revenue will benefit them because 
because they have more of a fixed cost structure as they continue to evolve their technology obviously that will do good and they do believe year over year gross margin expansion is anticipated uh, but obviously a lot of tailwinds that has a lot of headwinds that has investors a little bit worried then there was another kind of CFO Q and not the same QFO CFO Q and A session but it was a question about the data center business and the CFO just wanted to reiterate that hey look the data center will still be down quarter over quarter and I guess a lot of investors were might maybe expecting their data center segment to maybe be up sequentially especially if the company is kind of announcing all these cool products and kind of all this strength but overall CFO mentions hey look let's not get ahead of ourselves data center will still be down quarter over quarter they do mention excess inventory in the channel led to delays in the data center recovery and that inventory digestion is expected to last through quarter three and potentially even quarter four so obviously that's a big big kind of uh, t headwind for this company's data center market now, the final thing I want to take a closer look at is this company's valuation. Uh, if we and compare it to AMD and NVIDIA, maybe some of its biggest competitors. Um, if we take a closer look at current P.E. ratio, Intel Corporation looks the cheapest at 16, while NVIDIA is in the hundreds and AMD is pretty much non-existent right now. But now if we take a closer look at forward and that's the end of this fiscal year, uh, the story changes. Intel is actually the most expensive, going with a P.E. ratio of almost 56 amd and nvidia are very close to in the high 30s now let's kind of forward one year after that so the next fiscal year now if we take a closer look at the next fiscal year everybody kind of gets a little bit closer intel becomes the cheapest at roughly a pe ratio of 20 nvidia the highest at roughly 27 amd in the middle at roughly 24 so it does seem like analysts are expecting that this current this current um, fiscal year is going to be kind of a very weak year for Intel, even though they still will have a profitable P.E. ratio. But maybe upcoming next year, when a lot of these kind of investments are done in forms of manufacturing, in forms of technology in five nodes in four years, then the company can return to very, very profitable values. Um, but we can see it becomes more of a competitive landscape compared to AMD and NVIDIA again, where normally Intel used to have the lowest P.E. P.E. ratio, right? But now if we're taking a closer look at forward one year, that P.E. ratio becomes very, very tight. Uh, so I do want to say I am enjoying Intel stock at the moment. I do believe at 35, it's looking pretty, pretty interesting. I personally would really, really like to enter this stock at below $30. I do have investments in AMD and NVIDIA. So if I don't get that opportunity, it's A-OK -okay with me because I do believe those stocks may kind of mirror to some extent what Intel might show in the upcoming year but if i do get that buying opportunity i'm really looking for below 30 dollars or somewhere in the low 30s where i open up an uh, entry position uh so i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode take care have a good day and see you next time